setting up for the hummingbirds that are coming. And the first nest was just built yesterday. There's tons of hummingbird feeders. You may want to actually set up smaller hummingbird feeders so this way you can bring in more hummingbirds in different areas around your yard. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm at Walmart. Gary came the other day to pick up uh, about 50, 75 pounds of sugar, I can't remember. And he stopped over and he said, you've got to go look at Walmart's hummingbird feeders. They got him in. So I thought, okay, I've got to go and I'm going to take you with me because we're going to go through all these hummingbird feeders I found. They go up to the ceiling. It does say ask for assistance if you can't reach them, but let's go through each and every hummingbird feeder. So you'll know what to get, what will work better for your garden, your situation, because everybody's got their own issues. It, it could be bees, it could be ants, it doesn't matter. And if you don't have it, then you can pick any one you want. You may want a lighter one, you may want a heavier one, you may want something easier to clean, you may want a smaller hummingbird feeder. Maybe you want to set up multiple hummingbird feeders around so this way they won't fight. You know, this way you separate them. You may only have a few and you only want to set up one hummingbird feeder. Let's go through each and every hummingbird feeder behind me and I'm going to buy some too today. Let's go see what they look like. Okay, now let's go through the hummingbird feeders and let's start from the bottom. This is actually one of my favorite hummingbird feeders. Now, let me tell you the fault in my opinion and it's strictly my opinion. I find these particular holes that they put in there, the feeder holes, too small. It might be good for some species of hummingbirds, but I've had some of mine actually stick their beak in the hole and then the moment they stuck their beak in, they pulled it out in a panic. They literally panicked. So though I do buy these, I alter them for the hummingbirds that I am feeding. It's really an inexpensive hummingbird feeder. It's plastic, but you know, I've had some last for quite a few years. So I'm, I personally like those. That's one of my favorite. Then you've got all these others. Now let's go through this one. This one is 688. And what this is, is a bee guard. Now the hole is kind of big, but let's say the bees can't reach it then that you know that one's pretty good again it's plastic i have not tried one of those but you know it looks like it would work it does have a bee guard on it so that is good if you've got a bee issue that's a really really good one again let me go back to this one see this this is what i like this is a seat a lot of hummingbird feeders don't have seats my hummingbirds are lazy they actually sit there and enjoy themselves and want to take their time so all hummingbirds are different, but I, that's, this is the reason I like these. They changed the holes on them. I don't know why, because when I was buying them, some of them didn't have those tiny holes. Um, whatever the reason is, I make the holes bigger. This one too, that I just talked about, has a seat and that's what I like. I really, really like the seat. Now this one, also plastic, has really, I guess that is a bee guard, but no seat to it. It's, this one is $7.94. I mean, it will do the job. They all hang, all of them have hangers. You just hang, you know, put the hook on. Whether they come with it or not, I don't know. I don't see, oh, the hanger's inside. So they've got the hanger inside. So if you're going to the store on this one, this, this one I just showed, look inside and make sure your hook is there. If not, you'll be going home and looking for wire and making your own hook. These come with the hook on the top and make sure they're there because I see a few in the back that do not have the hanging hook. So before you buy it, just make sure the hook is there. Same thing on this one. This one's got the hook inside. Again, no seat. If you don't have a problem with that, hummingbirds will still use it, but they won't hang around. They're very quick. Now, this is a very, very interesting one. This one, let me see. This one is $8.94. It seats quite a few hummingbirds on this. Look at this, it goes all the way around. It's got a hook on the top and it's glass. This one is actually glass. I've never used one of these, but it, this would really do the job and it's quite attractive. Some people prefer glass. I don't mind either way, glass or plastic, but this is very cute. These have the flowers and that's a bee guard. The bees only have you know, their tongue or their mouth can only go so far, so they can't reach it. I don't know what the hum is. If they cannot reach the nectar, then they can't get to it and they won't hang around. What it is, is they come around, 
they reach it if it's got a big hole and they go back to the hive they do their little dance and say hey guys i just found the mother load let's all go out and get some food and everybody goes and then you've got nothing but problems and at that point you have to take the hummingbird feeder down at night and then find a new location for it because in the morning they're going to come back looking for it but this also has bee guards that's bee guards so that would be really nice and this is really a nice one and i like this and that's a very decent price this is kind of your average one that you see everywhere it seems like this has been around for a long time again this has got a really good bee guard it's got kind of a plastic basket around it so the bees cannot get in there at all it's got your seat it's also made of glass and that's where you would hang it now i don't see a hanger on this so i don't know if it's supposed to have it so be sure let me see maybe they put it in here no i don't see a hanger and i don't see it on the other one so kind of look around and make sure if it's supposed to have a hanger that the hanger is there but this is the one that kind of your conventional one that you see a lot of people using and this will feed four hummingbirds if you don't have that many you don't need to have something with a six to a dozen seats that's a really nice one this one also has a ant moat now see the top here right there you fill the top with water see all this right here it will hold water in that small amount that's all it takes so when the ants come and this is hanging when the ants come down the string the wire whatever they can't go to your feeder the reason they can't go is they don't want to go over the water now if the water is not there the water dries up leaves fall in it then yes they can cross it but that is an ant moat so that is very nice this one is an ant moat as well this is the um pennington the hummingbird feeder for for 8.94 and that has a very small ant moat you can put some water in there but i don't think it's really going to hold enough i really don't i think it they should have made that one, in my opinion, a little taller on the top. You can try it, because as long as they can't go past and reach the hook, then it'll be okay. But it's so shallow that I wouldn't even consider that an ant moat. This one, yes. So if you've got an ant problem, or you periodically do, then I definitely would go with something that's got an ant moat. You don't have to go buy an ant moat then. So this has got the bee guard. This has got the ant moat. This has got everything you need. Now let's see, they've got these here. These are going up in price. They're like 10.88 and they go up to $13. These are getting fancier. See how fancy, but that also is a bee guard. Um, I've never used anything like this. Also glass, this one's got a ring in it for hanging. Um, it's got the built-in perch. It's a little perch, so I'm not sure how that would work, but it's got a built-in perch. This is very interesting. Oh, there's your ant moat. Here, that's interesting. The ant moat is around the bottom. So once the ants come down here, I've never seen one like this. They can't crawl across to get the sugar because they can't get through there. There's no way they can get into the plastic. So they would have to come across this way. It's a very different ant moat, but that's what it is. And that is a little seat. And I'm sure they can sit there, but I kind of, Find this a very different design. But again, you've got your ant moat, you've got your perches, and it's dishwasher safe. I don't put any of mine in the dishwasher. It says the whole thing can be washed, and that's important. If this comes apart and it can be washed, this is great. I will tell you on these, they get harder and harder to wash. You have to actually soak them in a bleach solution to get them clean. This one comes completely apart. That's why I like these type completely. You can wash the whole thing. When they get very small like this and they don't come completely apart and the flowers don't come off, they actually do get mold under the flowers, so keep that in mind. That's why this one, as simple as it is, is one of my favorites. So this would be a little bit tricky to wash, but otherwise, you know, it should be fine. That's why it says put in your dishwasher, and that would be a way to clean it. Now you've got this one. Whoa, this is beautiful. Um, this one looks like it's about... I'm going to guess it's about $14, but it may be in the wrong place. So let's take a look. This one, twice as many hummingbirds. Now, if you don't have that many hummingbirds, then of course you don't need to be feeding a dozen hummingbirds. 
you may have a problem with your hummingbirds fighting. If they're fighting, then you want to get more smaller hummingbird feeders and separate them in your yard so each one can be, you know, take over one and you don't have to have all the fighting going on. You know how mine are. Mine are all peaceful. They would probably be fine with something like this. But it's got multiple seats here, so they would sit here. It's got the flowers they will feed in. It is very cute. I have to admit, it's glass, so I like that. It's got the hook on the top for you to hang it. And they've got that amp moat that's down here, so you fill the bottom with water. Very different, which means the ants will still come down and look, but you know, they won't come back, so it, it won't matter where the amp moat is, because what it is is that, like the bees, they go back to the nest, they get all their friends, and they all come down, have a feast on your sugar water that you put out for your hummingbirds. So if they can't reach it, then they won't come back, so it won't really matter. But this is a very unique amp moat. So you've got everything on here. You've got bee guards, You've got your ant moat, you've got seats for the hummingbirds, and as long as it all comes apart, I don't know how easy it's going to be to be cleaning these tall, long flowers. So, you know, this is something you would have to try and see if you like it. You would have to get something like a mascara brush and go in and out and clean it, or a pipe cleaner, because those flowers are long, say, and that means they, they will grow mold eventually inside, and you'll want to be able to clean it. They're saying it's dishwash dishwasher safe and that's fine but I just see I don't put mine in the dishwasher but you may have to do it with something like this because it will be a little bit more of a challenge to clean this one's quite nice this one's got little seats also it feeds six hummingbirds and again these are bee guards and this is probably their ant moat it doesn't hold a lot of water but it doesn't need to hold a lot of water. All you need to do is make sure that the ants cannot reach the nectar. It only takes one ant. Keep that in mind. It's one ant, the scout, that goes out looking, and when he finds it, he goes back and he tells everybody. Now you've got these hummingbird feeders. Let's see. Okay, now this one is a suction cup one. I have used the suction cup one. Keep an eye on it. As beautiful as they are, and as much as I like them, keep in mind, it's only suction cups, and they can release and fall, and you'll end up with no hummingbird feeder. If you could figure out a different way of putting it out there, that would be good, but they will work. They will work, but sometimes, eventually, the suction cups kind of get loose, and then you're dealing with that. And this one is gorgeous. I absolutely love this. If you don't have that many hummingbirds, and you don't have to be feeding, like I am making gallons a day, gallons a day of hummingbird nectar because we have thousands but if you don't have that many this is absolutely beautiful you're filling the bottom tray and they can sit around it there's a hook let me put it back up here and it looks like it may not be that difficult to clean it should all come apart and they can sit there and there's no big bottle you don't have a big bottle so when it's empty you just change it but i think that one is really 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 nice and that is a very unique hummingbird feeder i haven't tried one of those but that seems really good then you've got the glass barrel also glass it's got well this doesn't really have bee guards now this may be but the bees may be able to reach it so that's something i don't know about no ant guard so with that or ant moat you would have to go buy your own ant moat if you have an ant problem if you don't have an ant problem it won't matter see same thing here beautiful glass bottle it's like a wine glass they say kind of a diamond wine they're calling it same thing i'm not sure how well these will work as far as a bee guard and that will depend on the bees in your area if they can reach it then they're going to have a feast out of it so i'm not sure now this has a bee guard you can see it's lifted a little i'm sorry yes bee guard this has a bee guard you can see it's lifted and the bees cannot reach this as long as they can't reach the nectar and keep in mind, again, it only takes one bee. One bee goes back, tells everybody, does his little dance, and they all come back. If the bee comes around and, can't get, and cannot get to the nectar, he's not going to come back with any friends. This looks really good. This is glass. This does have a beautiful, let me show you this. Now, if you've got an, if you've got an ant problem, I'm still trying to turn it around. If you've got an ant problem, this has got a major ant moat on the top. You keep that top full of water and you have a great hummingbird feeder that will not have ants. That has a major ant moat and that is excellent if you've got ant problems. 
Now, you don't always have the ant problems and bee problems throughout the whole season. The ants, you know, sometimes they don't even start looking for a lot of stuff until fall. So it depends on your area and it depends on what you're dealing with. Now let's look at this one. Oh, this is, this is very, this is a double decker. I thought it was two. Look at that. This is a double decker hummingbird feeder. Let me step back so you can see that. I've never seen that before. It's a double decker. And let me reach on top. Let's take a look and see if it's got an ant moat. Yes, it does. That, my friends, is an ant moat. That's a really, really good ant moat. Now, that is something that I would consider. It's got multiple holes on the bottom. Look at that. So multiple hummingbirds could sit here and get into that. They can put their beak through if they wanted to. Um, gee, I don't like the way they spin. It scares me that if a hummingbird was feeding out of it, it could turn. Do these tighten? I don't think they tighten. They're all, yeah, they're all loose. I don't know. It depends on where the hole is and what the hole looks like inside. So if any of you are using it, you would have to tell me what you think. It is a unique, unique hummingbird feeder. But let me tell you something. Keep this in mind where you're hanging it. This thing is heavy. It's really heavy. So you better make sure you put it in a really good, strong place that can hold it, a good, strong branch or hook, because that hummingbird feeder, that is two hummingbird feeders put together made of glass, and glass is always heavier. Then we'll go to this one. Again, looks like a wine bottle. It's, this is their, this is the bee. Well, see now, this isn't gonna deter bees. Let's turn it this way. They put that on basically for a decoration. I don't think this is somebody that feeds hummingbirds. The little yellow fringes that are inside the, here are not gonna deter bees. That, the hummingbird is gonna feed in there because the bees can get in there too. Think about how a bee gets into flowers and they push and push and push all this around. This is not gonna stop bees. I don't know what this is supposed to stop and there is no ant mode on this. So you would have to get an ant mode if you've got an ant problem. My concern on these and a lot of these are cleaning, what it looks like when you take the whole thing apart. Here's another one. Very pretty. At least the flowers are nice and stable. Now it's got a single hole. It depends on the bees in your area. Some bees will not be able to reach the nectar and some bees will be able to reach the nectar. So it will depend on the type of bees that you've got for your area. So all you could do is try it. If you don't have a bee problem, remember, it won't matter. No ant moat, and here it's got a string that you hang it with, but you may want to put a wire because again, this has really got some weight to it. There, it's heavy. So think about this. It's got hibiscus flowers painted on it, and it's very pretty. Um, it's very, very pretty. Then you've got this little barrel looking thing. Maybe it's a flower, I'm not sure. And then again, same thing with the holes. I'm not sure this, you know what, those holes are too big if you've got a bee problem. So if you've got a bee problem, this is plastic, this is glass, I'm going to say the bees can reach the nectar that you're putting in here. They will be able to reach that. So you have to think about that because this will, this will definitely not keep bees away. I'm, they can reach this and there is no ant moat on this one. And then the last one they've got here is this beautiful blue glass. Uh, it's got the same flowers. I'm going to say this is not really a true bee guard because that hole is awful big. The bees will go all the way down and if they can reach it. Depends on how far it is from the nectar and how the nectar that you make goes in there. This is plastic, this is plastic, and this is glass, and this is the way it goes on. No ant mode. And if you do go to Walmart, we've gone over all of them, and you do think you haven't seen that many, look up. Because when you look up, they've got so many up there. So the same ones that are down here are up on top. So they, they've got the biggest display. I have to say that Walmart's got one of the biggest displays of hummingbird feeders. And they've got all kinds. In fact, this one I didn't even see down here, kind of twisted around. So definitely what you want to do is you want to go through each and every hummingbird feeder and think about the issue that you may have if you've got any issues at all. That's what you want to think about. And again, what you're dealing with. That's the main thing. 
what you are dealing with. If you're not dealing with bees, then you don't have to worry about it. If you're not dealing with ants, you don't have to worry about it. But let me say on ants, any single hummingbird feeder here, whether it's got an ant mode or not, that you can deal with because that all you have to do is buy an ant moat. I don't see any ant moats here, but you can get those online and they're cheap. You can get them for, it doesn't cost that much. You can get them on eBay, Amazon, less than $10. A lot of them are made out of copper, so you'll have them forever. Or you can make your own. I make my own. And that's basically it. When it comes to formula, you know how I feel on that. I make my own, which is a quarter cup of sugar to one cup of water. That's all you need. But if you can't make your own, there are people that can't there. They're living in a, a, a situation where they don't have the facility to make their own. Then of course, buy what you want to buy. That is totally up to you. You've got some that have no dyes. And then of course, you've got some that have dyes. There's so many different kinds and some are concentrated. So some of them, you're just going to add some water to it. This is basically probably a sugar and you're going to add the water the amount that it says go by the instructions i can't really advise anything on this because i have never bought hummingbird nectar i have no reason to i prefer to make my own when they, when they come in bottles like they're adding vitamins but this is for oreos and stuff um i don't know you know so you have to decide what is going to work for you they add a lot they add all kinds of different things. They add in calcium, they add in citric acid, they add in because they have to add in preservatives. So when I do sugar and water, there's no preservatives and you don't need dye. So that's, that's basically it. I think I've covered everything and they've got powdered concentrated hummingbird feeder of uh, hummingbird food up there and they've got the liquid ones. They've got really everything you need and you can go online if you can't get to a Walmart in your area and a lot of these can be ordered online so think about that too I've gone over pretty much all the ones that they sell I would prefer that you make your own I'll get into details on how easy it is to make the hummingbird feeder hummingbird feeder food another time today I just wanted to go over all the different feeders and why you would maybe want to buy one over another the reason again that I like this one is this whole thing comes apart this unscrews and the whole thing is one piece and you just scrub it out. I clean it with a toothbrush and a, and a stiff paintbrush and it's one, two, three, the whole thing. This also, when it comes apart, has a wide mouth base. The base, I can't unscrew it with one hand, uh, is big and it's so easy to clean. When you start getting into some of these, they have these little tiny holes, it becomes a challenge to clean it. So you got to get a long brush in there like some of these. You've got to get a long brush and you got to scrub them. I like something that's got a big wide base to it. It's quick and easy to clean and that's what I'm always looking for. Quick and easy. So just a tip. I took this one apart because I really like this one. I was thinking of buying it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It does come apart but see all this you will have to clean every single thing inside. All of this will have to be clean. So it does come apart, and that is a little bit of a bonus. But every little crevice, the more crevices you have like that, the more you have of that, the little, the little indentations inside, and then, of course, the flowers, everything inside there will get mold in it. So you have to have a way of cleaning it. But again, it will look beautiful in your yard. If you've got ways of cleaning it, that's the main thing because you will have to soak it and clean it. It's just like this one. You have to get these little baskets washed really well because it's the same thing. They do get dirty and you have to wash them. And this one, as I talked about, because of the flower is so long, you've got to be able to get in there and scrub that with a pipe cleaner or something. This one, this is my favorite. There's nothing, nothing with nothing. It's three pieces and it comes right apart and it's very, very easy to clean. I just make these holes a little bit bigger. Because the holes are so tiny and the hummingbirds here do not like it, they don't want to use it, 
It is no longer bee proof if you have bee problems, but the hummingbirds will not get their beak stuck. I make sure that each and every hole is smooth. If you do it from the back side, it will be smoother on the top. You make the hole larger on the back side, then you'll see it might burn the plastic a little bit and turn a little black. On the ends, on the top, it looks nice. I make sure each hole is smooth for the hummingbirds. If it's not smooth, take a little file and I file it down or I go back if any of them aren't smooth and I just smooth them out with the caught soldering iron when it's still hot. Don't burn yourself. Best to do this outside. You don't want to leave any rough spots on there. And then for me, it's the perfect hummingbird feeder. And that is strictly my opinion. If you've got ways and you want to soak it in vinegar and water or any way you want and scrub it with baking soda, you know, that's perfectly fine. But that's just my opinion on that. So let's keep going and looking through all the different hummingbird feeders. So I think I've covered almost everything I could possibly think of on hummingbirds. They're coming if you don't have them already there. A lot of areas I know that they're starting to come to. We had our first nest built yesterday in the yard and I'm so excited. It's probably the same one that's been nesting around or her siblings because they love shade cloth. The other nests around don't usually have shade cloth. And again, it's the same spot that she's been nesting in. So that's it. So let's help them out. You know, it's hard for them to find a lot of food. This is why I do it. There's a lot of weed abatement in areas. There's not a lot of flowers. A lot of people spray to get rid of everything and so they don't have enough food. So what we're doing is we're helping them out because remember, this is only part of their diet. The sugar water we're giving them is not their full diet. They are eating pollen and they are eating insects. This is just part of it. So it gives them energy. It keeps them alive in case they can't find food and it keeps them going and that's what I'm trying to do. So I hope I've given you some ideas on the hummingbird feeders that are behind me. They go all the way to the ceiling almost. They have so many. Get the one that's gonna work better for you. Get the one that you can afford. It doesn't matter whether it's glass or plastic. I've been using plastic for years and you know we have thousands and we only started with like one or two hummingbirds. So it doesn't matter. You pick out the one you like, the what you're gonna wanna look for, what you're gonna wanna look out your window and see, and you pick the one that you think is gonna work for your yard, your window, your porch, your garden, that's all that matters. And geez, you could pick out more than one. You could pick out a couple of them if you want and put them around the yard and see what the hummingbirds like the best. But remember, I prefer to have a seat on it because I like to have them hang around, but you know, it doesn't matter. I also make hummingbird feeders too, so we'll get into that another time. Have a great day. I hope I've answered some questions. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm leaving Walmart, picking up two more hummingbird feeders today. Already picked one up the other day and some 20 cent seeds. They have some more hummingbird feeders that were not in the back. Look at that. So when you go to Walmart, look around and be sure you look out of the box. In other words, don't always go to where you think they are, because these are behind the register in the garden department. So an end cap to my video on feeding hummingbirds. The Orioles are back. I was in the garden this morning getting ready to put the video up. I had just finished it and I hear screaming and screaming behind me and I thought, well, what's making that noise? And I look up and in the tree, the male Oriole has now shown up. That means the females will show up soon. Males show up first and they want their tray. I have a tray for them. So I've got to get their tray out because they're letting me know they're back in town. So with that, spring is here almost. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.